Hi everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today I'm excited because I'm planning my fall wardrobe. In keeping with my New Year's resolution for this year, I've been just doing my shopping at thrift stores and small local boutiques, like locally owned, independent little boutiques. So that's been so much fun. And I have to say, I found so many cool things. So over the next couple of days, I'm just gonna be going through them all and seeing what needs to be done to make them fit me properly. I'm not doing any crazy overhauls. I just wanna show you what you can find on a budget and what you can put together. I'm gonna to do my cleaning, do my alterations, and then put together as many outfits for fall as I can. And I'm just really happy to have you along for the ride for this because it's gonna be fun. What I was hunting for while I was shopping was first of all, anything that I just love that I just thought was fabulous, but also anything kind of in the beige to brown side of things, which I normally avoid. I gravitate toward black and gray, not so much brown and beige. But this year, one of the big trends is so much brown, camel, beige, champagne, that kind of color. And so I'm learning to embrace it. Another trend that I've been kind of keeping an eye out for is lots of knit pieces, like head to toe. So a, a couple of knit pants that I bought, which I think are gonna be really nice. I've totally moved away from skinny pants. I don't really wanna wear leggings anymore or skinny jeans. So the knit pants that I found are either straight or even have a bit of a flare, which I think is kind of a funky vibe for right now too. So, so that's where I am. I got lots of pieces to try on, show you, fix up, and then put together in outfits. So let's jump right in. I'm gonna start with this shirt, which when I first saw it on the hanger, two things struck me. First, it was very like crispy, almost papery, very stiff. And then the second thing that struck me is that I think it's silk. So I know it sounds crazy, but I washed it. I washed it on gentle, gentle detergent, hung it up to dry, and it still has that crispness, but I think once I press it, it'll really soften up nicely. So I think all the shirt needs is a press with a nice hot iron and steam. But I wanted to show you the pants. So I thought these pants had a really funky vibe to them. And they almost fit perfectly, but they're big over the hip and they just feel a little bit sloppy. I could almost get away with them, but I think it would be nicer to just take it in over the hip and make it a little snugger over the thigh, but then keep the flare. I really like that flare with the stripe. I think that's got a nice groovy vibe to it. So the easiest way for me to pin in what I need to take in is to take them off, flip them inside out, put them back on inside out, and then I'll be able to pin my way down the side. I'm gonna give the shirt a press, and then we'll see how that all goes. I'm not 100% sure that this is silk, so I'm gonna test out the iron in the center back of the under collar, just to make sure that it can handle the heat. Beautiful. And just from that little test, I can tell from the smell and the feel that this is 100% silk. The smell of silk is just really, I don't know, different. Oh, it's just a really nice smell. It smells like herbs or something. It's really lovely. And look at how that comes up so beautifully. Nothing about the smell, feel, or look of this is synthetic. Now, mind you, if it was synthetic, it'd be a lot easier to take care of. So it looks a little goofy to have my pants inside out but it really works well when you're trying to pin your side seams by yourself. So my pins are going in vertically to mimic sewing. So then I also wanna pin where it's gonna flare back out so I don't have to guess later. And I wanna blend that line right up and right down. If I wanted, I could take some from the inseam here too. Oh so yeah, that leg feels a lot better than this one where this one just feels sloppy and that's not the look I want. So I'm just gonna duplicate this one over to here once I have them off and laying flat. So I'm just carefully laying one seam on top of the other, so my two inseams, my right inseam and left, so that I can duplicate where these pins are going. From the knee down, basically I just want it to taper back out in a straight line. The length of the pants is good, so I don't want to mess around with the hem, so I'm just going to be blending that back in right above the hem. Same thing on the side seam, duplicating my pins on the other leg. I am just feeling through from one side to the other. I can feel that there's a pin right here. And then going straight from the knee to just above the hem. 
Now, when you're doing this on jeans, double check that there's no rivet here, because that will definitely break your needle. I think I'm safe in this case. I'm going to use a basting stitch, and I'm gonna be sewing just from pin to pin down all four of those seams. Then I'll try them on. If it's all good, then I will go over that with a regular stitch. So I tried them on and I just love the fit. And so I went over my basting with regular stitching and now I'm just going to serge off the extra. I'm gonna go slowly because sometimes my serger doesn't love cutting off all this extra. So the fit of the pant is so much nicer. Like, I'm really glad I do that. I don't know if you can really see that much of a difference. I don't know if I even see it, but the way it feels, it just doesn't feel sloppy anymore. It just feels trim. So there's one outfit, but I can do so much more with this. So just watch. I picked up this jacket. Now this was not thrifted. This was from a boutique that, like an independently owned local boutique, which I wish was still in business. Unfortunately, they were going out of business and so their prices were amazing. I got this jacket for 80% off. The, nor the regular price was like $550 or something, which I could never have afforded. But at 80% off, it was literally, it was still, still a splurge at 80% off. But it's beautiful, I love it. So that works nicely. I kind of like these jeans. I don't know, I feel like a 70s rock star. I also picked up this little sleeveless hoodie which has so many possibilities. The main reason I got it was to be able to throw it under a plaid shirt. So I kind of like it like that just for a super casual day, but I can actually dress this up. The sleeveless hoodie looks great with the striped pants, and then I could throw a blazer over that. This is super comfy. This, I could live in this outfit. Or of course, a denim jacket goes with everything. I also picked up this beautiful cashmere turtleneck. Now, you know me in necklines. I, I'm gonna try to live with this neckline. It's, it's a maybe. I might end up doing something different to that neckline. But for now, I'm gonna try to live with it. And it goes great with my striped jeans. Have it belted like that or plain. While I've got that blue blazer out, I'll just show you. I also picked up this blue shirt. I thrifted this for a few dollars but it's beautiful. It's absolutely perfect with this jacket. And the striped jeans are still working. This blue top is also perfect with this little skirt that I actually thrifted last year and never wore because I just didn't have anything to go with a skirt that has pictures of chair lifts on it. But I love this skirt and I think that the blue top is really pretty with it. And the chair lift skirt also looks great with the cashmere sweater. And I can throw the blue blazer over the cashmere sweater with the chair lift skirt. So from another boutique that was having a sale, local, independent, no fast fashion, um, I picked up these cool paisley pants, which are just pull on, stretchy, and with a little bit of a wider leg, even a little bit of flare, and I just love these pants. And they look great with the cashmere sweater. And I grabbed the little booties too, little suede booties. Those are good. So this cashmere sweater I thrifted for, a, I think it was about $10 but it is 100% cashmere and it's soft and the color is exactly what I was looking for for this fall. Okay, and then two other things I wanna show you to go with these pants. One is this awesome oversized blazer that was totally in the men's department at the thrift store. In fact, there was a young woman who was trying it on and I was walking over to say to her like, ooh, that's a good one, you should get that. And then she put it back on the rack. So instead of saying anything, I just kind of went, <laughs> so uh, I scored the awesome oversized kind of boyfriend blazer. I like mixing patterns, so I'm fine with putting the putting this jacket with these pants. I kind of like that combination. I love it. We're gonna come back to this blazer in a minute, but first I wanna show you that I got another cashmere sweater. This one I got at the same boutique that was closing where I got that beautiful cream and black blazer. This one is long and has pockets. I think you could even wear it as a dress with tights, but it's soft and pretty and comfortable and I love it. And it's part of what I'm going for with the head to toe knits. So I'm gonna show you it with some knit pants as well. Okay, I think this is my favorite outfit so far. Look at this long cashmere sweater with these knit pants and my favorite snakeskin pumps. So these pants are narrower and I think that's a nice proportion with this bigger sweater. I love the combination of the two soft browns. I think that's really pretty. 
So quick change of top. This one I thrifted. It's just so soft and clean and fresh. I think the reason why somebody might have donated it to a thrift store is because it wasn't quite made right. It was made symmetrically so the two sides were the same with both had this tie kind of stitched across. It had a hole like this on both sides for the tie to pass through and it actually didn't work. It didn't make sense. So from the under one, the underside, I unpicked the tie going across and just reattached it and closed up the one hole. So it works perfectly now and I have to say it just feels so soft and pretty. With the little hint of the lace camisole underneath, I think that's really a pretty look. Perfect with these knit pants, soft and cozy and comfortable for fall. One more top I want to show you that does need a little bit more alteration, so let me just change into that. For evenings in the fall, I love this one. It's it's like got this gold sequin effect on it on top of a pinky taupe kind of color. It's just so pretty, I love it. But it's kind of, it's big. I'm good with the length of it, I kind of like that for an evening look, but it's really big. So again, I'm gonna take it off, flip it inside out, pin it how I want it, and then I'll be able to sew that easily. I'm just gonna flip it. So now with it inside out, again, I just pick up the sides and I'm taking in that much. And then I just have to decide if I wanna take in that much all the way down or flare it back out. I think a boat like that would be great. I think I'm gonna love that. It feels so nice. So the first thing I wanna do is make sure that my two sides are pinned the same. So if they're different, then I'll just split the difference. I also wanna make sure that it's laying smooth. And if I actually do get the seams to lay smooth, the front is a lot higher than the back. So I definitely want those two to meet. And even if they don't meet, if the front sits a bit higher, I still want to make them meet if I can to just ease the front into the back. It will look kind of terrible if those two edges don't meet under the arm. This was the narrowest part. So it'll be straight from there down to the bottom and then it'll curve back out to the top pin. And I'm ready to sew just there. And then I'll try it on again before I cut off and serge. Good, so when I'm starting, I really want these two edges to line up nicely. And before I take out that pin, I'm gonna sink my needle down, put my presser foot down. Then I can remove my pin safely without those edges shifting. And you'll notice I'm not starting right at the beginning. I'm starting a little bit in, and then I'm gonna back up to the beginning and continue, just to make sure those edges stay together. Now here, there's a little bit of ease in the front, which is basically like replacing a dart, because I want these edges to stay together. So I'm gonna stop there, and then I'm gonna flip it and come back in the other way using the exact same little trick. So again, I want to pin with my edges exactly together, sink my needle down, remove my pin, and then back up to the beginning. Otherwise, you'll find that the presser foot will push the top one, the feed dogs will pull the bottom one, and you'll have that shift. Okay, so I'll try it on again and let you know. So the sequin top is finished and I have to say, I just think it's lovely. It feels light as air and so soft and it's just an easy, easy piece to throw on. I would totally wear this out for dinner, for date night. And I love the combination of those soft colors for transition into fall. But I can also try this top with the darker knit pants that I showed you already. I think that's a really pretty look for date night. But I can also do this too. The last few seasons, designers have been showing sequins not just for nighttime. So when I throw on this big jacket over top with those darker pants, this could be a great day to night kind of look. So I could wear this to work, after work, take off the blazer and just be ready for dinner out. And I love this. This is probably where I'm most comfortable. Anytime I wanna slip back into my comfort zone of the blacks and grays, I can just put on something that is a mixture of black and brown and throw this jacket over. And that works great with a basic black jean. And then I'm in my comfort zone. I feel like I'm just gonna live in this outfit this fall. But then I have to show you one more jacket. This was a score. This is a Jaeger wool and camel hair jacket. This is, this is good stuff. 
It fits so nice and trim, very different from the kind of boyfriend jacket that I've been wearing. It's a very different look. And I've always loved how camel and black mix together. So this will be a real easy throw on kind of thing. Okay, I think that's it. I think that's everything that I've thrifted or at least the most interesting pieces that fit the trends that I was going after for fall. So lots of shades of brown, sequins for day and night and knit from head to toe. And then also transitioning those pieces into what I already have in my closet and what I'm already comfortable in. Any pieces I find that I still need that I haven't been able to find either locally or in thrift stores, then that's what I'll be sewing for fall. But I think I've pretty much covered it, haven't I? That's all. That's a lot of clothes for very little money and some really good quality pieces. I hope that gives you some inspiration for fall in how you can dress on a budget and with your values in mind of dressing more sustainably while you stay in fashion. So I hope you had fun with that. It was really nice to have you aboard while I did my fall fashion show. And until next time, you take care.